look at that beautiful, beautiful view. And now we're gonna ruin it. What's up guys, Noah with Madison Angling. I'm fishing with my buddy Al and Jay today. We're going out of Milwaukee. We are chasing salmon, specifically going for cohos. We may switch it up, chase some kings later today, but the bite's been pretty darn good. The last couple days, it's gotten a little eh, up and down-ish, but we've been doing pretty darn well out here. So we're gonna give you guys a little look into how we're targeting these fish. Of course, we are in my new Ranger 620, new to me, I should say. And uh, we are all decked out. Oh, wow, look at that, guys. Check that out. Looking at the graph here, that's all bait. I bet you those are either trout or cohos mixed in. You'll love to see it. So we're going to get out here, get set up. We'll give you a run through on the rigs we're running and hopefully catch some tasty Lake Michigan candy this morning. Here we go. All right, guys. So I've already got one of our lines set. My camera wasn't recording. Go figure. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and set a dipsy here. This is probably going to be one of our hotter lines today. So what we're running on these is pretty simple. This is a uh, double O Lure Jensen Dodger, just a neon orange down to an 18 inch, 40 pound soft steel fluorocarbon leader and a peanut fly, a little Howie tackle peanut fly. And that's it. We're going to run this on a dipsy diver. I've got this set on, I believe a two and a half or a three setting. So we're going to send this guy right out the side of the boat here. And for those of you not familiar, dipsy divers are pretty cool. They work just like an underwater planer board. They pull your line down and off to the sides. So we're going to send this guy out about 30 feet or so. That should get us about 12 to 15 feet down. And we're keeping the boat around two and a half miles an hour here. So we're going to send this guy down 30 feet. Perfect. We'll adjust our drag here because we want the fish to be able to pull line when they grab it. And the first thing we do when these fish grab it is we back off the drag because these fish all they do is they twist and turn and do crazy stuff they don't take runs quite like kings do so <clears throat> you want to let them fight and kind of go crazy do their thing so we got our drag set relatively light light enough that they can pull a little bit and we'll hear the rod go off and then once the fish is on we'll back the drag off a little bit fight the fish and hopefully that's that's gonna be one of our hotter rods it has been our hotter rods lately has been uh, the three color lead core as well as our dipsies kind of running them up high here. So we're gonna get the rest of our lines in and hopefully catch some fish. There we go, outside, three color. Jay, you're up. Yep, let's go, Jay. Is this nice? Yep, just wait, just wait, just wait. Okay, nice and slow and steady. Let them shake, dude. When you see them do that, just let them freak out. Yep, don't, don't, yep. You can, you can go ahead and reel. When we get the board off though, if they are bringing it into the back of the boat, you want it, if they start freaking out, just let them freak out. Don't keep reeling. All right, guys, so really important step here when you're unclipping a planer board, and this goes for, oh yeah, he's there. This goes for any kind of fishing is when you unclip it, you don't want to give them any slack. So I'm going to unclip it, go ahead and start reeling, Jay. Let the rod load up. Don't give them any slack in that line because that can give them just enough leverage to pop the hook. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Don't slow down. There we go. All right, first fish of the day. That's that is a beautiful one. coho. That's probably, that's easy five pounder. Look at that guy. That is a nice fish. Okay, get our peanut fly out of there. There we go, guys. Double O Dodger, green Howie fly on the three color. Sweet. Yeah, let's take a look at that thing. <laughs> yep, that's a coho. Awesome. Oh, that's all right. We're eating them. In. Yeah. All right, first fish. Nice. Good job. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, good. I wasn't recording that. At all? I don't know. All right. Well, I don't know if that recorded or not, but we got another fish. We we're just setting out that three color. Jay just caught that first fish on. Dipsy diver went off, and the net job was real interesting. Uh, Al lost the. Let's take a look at that thing. Oh, that's a beautiful fish. Yeah, I got a wet hat here very wet hat so the fish got wrapped up in the leader it was like upside down and backwards al went for a scoop missed it knocked his hat off into the water the scoop or i don't know somebody knocked the hat off you want to move that net yeah. um knocked the hat off he scooped the hat and then scooped the fish it was uh it was quite the maneuver and i'm a little upset assuming this wasn't recording i don't know if it was i don't think it was Okay, bites are happening, finally. Slow start, but bites are happening. There we go, another dipsy. 
Got him. Sweet. Okay, that's more like a, a normal size coho. That's what most people are kind of used to running into out here, two, three pounders, but dude, the fish have been All of a sudden. pretty gigantic this year overall. Nice. All right, another one on the, the Howie Fly and Double O Dodger. Beauty. Definitely uh, can be fast and furious you get in a pot of fish like that. And I would definitely expect multiple rods to go off in a very short amount of time. So that was one on this three color lead core and one on each of the dipsy divers. That was sweet. Absolutely awesome. I am fighting with my cameras a little today too. So I don't know if I got all of that. Hopefully I did. So one little trick guys, I know if you've probably watched some of my other salmon videos, um, you've, I've mentioned this before, but as you let out a, a lead core line, so this is a three color, I have 30 yards of lead core line on here. I let it out really slow. And the reason you do that is because lead sinks, obviously that's the whole point of having a, a lead core set up is it sinks. And if you just let it out and just let it free spool uh, kind of all on its own, uh, that's a really good way for your line to sink, especially if you're in shallow water. Granted, we're in about 60 feet of water right now. Where are we at here? Actually, we're in 70 feet of water. Um, so a little bit deeper, but you still want to be mindful of that because if you were to just send this thing out and let it just go on its own, especially if you're running something bigger, like a seven color or a, a 10 color, you're letting out a hundred yards of line. That thing will make it all the way to the bottom and get snagged. So you definitely want to let these out nice and slow. And when I feed the line out, now that I got the board kind of clear of our dipsies and our downriggers, I'm going to use the drag instead of just free spool with the clicker to let that thing out. I'm just going to let it go out nice and slow on its own. And, and as it feeds out, it's kind of matching the boat speed. So it's fishing on its way out too. So quick little tip if you're running lead core. There we go. Dipsy. Here you go, Jay. Yep, just a little bit. Hang on. Yep, let him run. Is he still there? Real, real, real. Yep, he's there. Yeah. Every once in a while, I'll swim at you, so you gotta catch up. Yep, and then when he freaks out, let him freak out. Perfect. Okay. Yep, keep him coming. Here, let me check that. It's a little light. There we go. Yep, keep the rod bent. Let him. Yep, let him freak out. I don't know. Back up more. Get up kind of where Al is. You don't have to go up, but right back there. There you go. All the way to the tip. Lift, lift, lift. There we go. Got her. Yep. Nice fish. Man, they're gobbling it too. We haven't had one that's just been like lip hooked. They are like chewing it, chewing it. Yeah, check out this fly, guys. Maybe not. That thing is just... So there's a coho fight for you. That's why you just let them shake, because they go absolutely nuts. That thing is just gone. Come on out of there. There we go. Another absolutely beautiful, beautiful coho. And they're all this size, guys. They're all stinking big this year just crazy at least milwaukee it's kind of a gradual drop off to get out deep like up near sturgeon bay it's like boom there we go five color do i get the real one in finally got one on a five color look at him go i think it's a coho i think it's a big coho so on the big boats a trick that they do to keep the fish straight back is they bury the rod tip in the water and the resistance on the line pulls the fish straight back. Good. Yep, you ready? Nice. That's a stud. That's dude, a that's stud. a giant. That's like that's a seven, a eight pounder, dude. That's a big one. Dude, that thing's huge. That's, awesome. that's not my biggest coho ever, but it is darn close. Look at that thing, dude. That thing's like, that's gotta be seven pounds all day. <laughs> that thing's huge. Ah, making a mess all over my boat. 
Not done fighting. There we go, guys. Oh, look at his face. That is beefcake, <laughs> yeah. They get a little bloody, guys. Beautiful. They're not pretty, but... They are pretty, a, just this one's a little bit rough. Ginormous Lake Michigan coho. All right, we're going to box this sucker and get that line back out. There we go, Dipsy. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Here you go, Jay. Okay, start backing up. Watch your foot, Al. Here we go. Here we go. Beauty. Beauty. Just banging on them. There we go, even better. Don't even have to mess with it. That peanut fly is so screwed. <laughs> that thing has probably caught 20 fish in the last, this is my third time out this year. Just wrecked. Love it. Here we go. Yeah, it's a big one. Straighten us out. With this wind, you really can't turn tight. You gotta make really big turns. You might only have one shot at this J, so head first. Get him. Nice. Nice, dude. Dude, that's huge. That's like a 10 pounder, that's dude. Huge. Dude, that Go is back. a freaking Go giant. Back. That is a freaking giant. Dude, that is probably the biggest coho I've ever seen. That thing's gigantic. Holy cow. That was pretty wild. That thing got crazy on us there. Sure. We'll get a quick picture of this thing. Get this line back in the water. Holy cow. Well, guys, it's getting a little rolly. Not that that's a problem, because it's not. It's more so what's coming behind us here. We got some rain coming. I'm already getting wet. So before all of my camera stuff gets wet, we're going to go ahead and call it. We're, uh, we're going to keep fishing here a little bit. I think we got like nine or ten in the box. All really nice cohos. We've had a bunch of drive-bys. Uh, but things definitely slowed down. This wind picked up out of the south, and then it just kind of died. And a lot of people are getting off, and I think it's because they're scared of the waves. But I don't know. It's what, maybe a one-foot chop out here, and it's supposed to stay like this pretty much all day. So uh, anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know it's been a long time since I put something out. I've had all kinds of crazy stuff going on, but we got a new computer. We got new software, and there's a lot more videos coming. So hey, guys, if you want to come out and do this, there's... Uh, there's plenty of time to come out and target salmon. This is kind of just the, more or less probably, kind of the, the tail end of the coho stuff. And then we're gonna start getting into Kings, Steelhead, Lakers, all the fun stuff here as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.